This is the full MRTV review of the Lenovo Mirage Solo standalone VR headset coming up. Hi and welcome to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and if you are just as excited about VR and AR as I am, then subscribe now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. So here it finally is, the in-depth MRTV review of the Lenovo Mirage Solo. So what is the Lenovo Mirage Solo? Well, it is a $399 VR standalone headset. Standalone means that you do not need a computer, you do not need a console, and you do not need a smartphone in order to delve into VR with this device. And I could not review this device without talking about the little gray elephant which is standing in the room, which is the Oculus Go, because the Oculus Go is also a standalone device and they are competing against each other. And well, this here only cost $199. So it's only half the price of the Lenovo Mirage Solo. Now in this review, I will let you know what are the difference of the two devices. Where does each device have its advantages and disadvantages? And I'm going to let you know if it's worth it to get the Lenovo Mirage Solo or not. All now in the in-depth review. Before we begin, four reasons of full disclosure, I would like to let you know that Lenovo sent me this review unit free of charge, but as you know, that does not affect my review at all. And I'm still going to let you know about all the positive and negative aspects of this headset. And I only feel obliged to you, my dear subscribers. As always, let's start with design features and comfort. The Lenovo Mirage Solo is a good looking headset with its white and gray features and its overall design language. Now, as you can tell, it is one of the PSVR styles of headsets. So it means that all the weight of the headset rests on your forehead, which I personally like, but we're going to talk more about this when we talk about the comfort of the device. But just for design itself, I personally like it and I think most of you would agree with that. Now let's talk about the features because that's of course the main difference as compared to for example the Oculus Go. And the most important difference is that this here is a so-called six degrees of freedom device. Now what does this mean? Well the big difference is here in the front of the device where you see these two cameras and with these two cameras the device is able to tell where it is in space. So if you lean forward or if you duck or if you move somehow in space, this headset will, will um, know that and it will be represented in your virtual world just as you move. So for example, if you're watching Netflix and you're sitting on that red couch where on the Oculus Go that does not have this technology, you simply sit on that red couch and cannot move along. With this here, you can lean forward and have a look at the coffee cup, for example. You can even stand up and you can walk around in the room, but be careful and don't run into things because this does not really have this kind of boundaries that you have, for example, with the Rift or the Vive or the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, where before you would set up these boundaries. Unfortunately, that is not the case here with the Daydream standalone headset. Anyways, it's still great that you can stand up, that you can move around in the room. And well, this is really the big, big difference of the Mirage Solo as compared to the Oculus Go. They call it World Sense technology. And well, it's um, all done with these two cameras, which do the inside out tracking. So probably you're asking yourself, is this six degrees of freedom a big deal? And I can tell you, yes, it is indeed a big deal in virtual reality. And that's for several reasons. And one of them is that it's more comfortable. Sim simply think about it. When you're leaning in or if you're moving forward, everything is being represented in VR. Now with this here, with the Oculus Go, if you do these kind of things, then this is not being represented in VR and you might feel sick because of that. So one reason is definitely it is better, it's more comfortable, but also it's more immersive. With six degrees of freedom, you are truly in that virtual world and you can move around by, well, moving around in reality. 
and that is a whole different story than only being that um, spectator who, who can see everything like looking up and down but who cannot really move within VR so without a doubt the immersion is much better when you have six degrees of freedom. Let's move on to the other features of the Lenovo Mirage Solo and let's start with the screen even though we're going to talk about it more in depth later. So this comes with a beautiful LCD display which looks great in VR and it has a resolution of 1080 times 1440 pixels per eye just like the Oculus Go and just like the Oculus Go there is nearly no screen door effect so this really really looks good in VR. As what the memory is concerned, the Lenovo Mirage Solo directly ships with 64 GB of storage. So actually, it would be more fair to compare the device to the 64 GB version of the Oculus Go, which will set you back $249. So now the price difference is only $150. So is it worth it? Well, we're going to find out in the rest of this review. Now, on top of that, something that the Oculus Go also does not have is the expandable storage because here we have this slot here on the Lenovo Mirage Solo and into this slot you can put a micro SD card with up to 256 gigabyte of additional memory so that is quite a lot and you will not find that on the Oculus Go also something that you will not find on the Oculus Go is this here a USB-C port and for the Oculus Go we have the old micro USB port. So these are some differences that you need to know. On the bottom of the device we have this button here which will allow you to put the headset further away from your eyes or closer to your eyes and well this comes in handy for people with glasses who simply need more space so that is a nice little touch. Then on this side of the device we have the on and off button, we have the volume buttons and we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now also this device comes with dual microphones so that the people that you play with can hear you. Now let's talk about the features that are missing on the Lenovo Mirage Solo and that in my opinion for this price point should definitely be there. So first of all this device does not have an IPD adjustment, a manual IPD adjustment. So what does it mean? Well, you cannot change the distance of the lenses and you cannot make them fit your personal distance of your eyes. So this is definitely an oversight. So this is made for people who have the average interpapillary distance of around 64 millimeters. If your IPD is far off of that average IPD then you will have problems because you cannot manually adjust the, the the distance of the lenses and that's exactly the same as with the Oculus Go because the Oculus Go also does not have IPD adjustment. Now the reason is that this the screen the LCD screen is actually one display and not two displays and that's why you cannot move it along. So for this price I think it's not very nice that you do not have IPD adjustment. So definitely before you buy this or before you buy the Oculus Go you definitely need to know about your personal IPD and well you need to measure it. All right then another oversight like an oversight that is really not understandable for me is that this here the padding the face padding you cannot exchange it. This is glued to the device. So in most of the other headsets you will find some kind of velcro mechanism where you can easily change the face padding, this foam here. And for example with the Oculus Go you can easily, you can easily exchange the, all of that, all of that padding and you can wash it and probably even completely replace it if it's broken. And here actually the, the, the face padding is made of some flimsy foam which is very comfortable but I don't really believe that it's like um, yeah so well made and that it will last so long. So this is without a doubt a very unfortunate oversight that you cannot replace this foam 
also the same is actually true not just for the face padding but also for this padding here which is made from some more durable cloth which is also very very comfortable but also you cannot replace it the same is also true for for this padding here which is for your for the back of your head also comfortable but anyways you cannot replace it and i think for this price of 399 dollars this is an oversight i don't know how much they saved here probably they saved 50 cents but that doesn't make sense so if this breaks you will have to rip the whole thing off and probably build your own face padding with velcro and, uh, and a third party uh, face padding but that is not good enough in my opinion then one more thing that is missing on the Lenovo Mirage Solo are speakers. This does not have any built-in speakers and that's much, much better on the Oculus Go where, as you know, you have these inbuilt speakers where you don't need to put in headphones. But this does not have inbuilt speakers and you will need to use these headphones that come with the device. But let me show you how that looks like. And as you know, you already look funny when you're wearing a VR headset, but this kind of uh, puts the icing on the cake. Let me show you that. So unfortunately, this is how you need to use the device. And uh, yeah, <laughs> as you can tell, you don't really look cool anymore. I mean, you don't really look cool with VR headset anyway, right? But that, come on Lenovo. So of course you don't need to use these headphones and you can use other headphones which are probably cooler but come on why why don't we have like inbuilt headphones just like the Oculus Go or the Rift or most of these high-end headsets especially at the price range of $400 this is an oversight that I personally really cannot understand now let's talk about the comfort of the device and let's compare it to the Oculus Go so first of all weight wise this weighs 645 grams so it's a bit on the heavy side as compared to the oculus go which is around 400 grams so definitely you can feel the difference now in general i prefer the psvr style of headsets just like this one where all the weight rests on your forehead and also for this device it is a very comfortable device especially with that flimsy foam here foam here the flimsy foam is really comfortable on your face and also this area here which gets in touch with your forehead also is very comfortable so let me show you how that works we have just like with most of the devices this knob here in order to fix it to your head and let me wear it now and you would simply use this knob here and then you have a good fit and indeed it is a very comfortable device now i found out that actually i have to i had to um, try quite a few times in the beginning to get it right especially here now there's also one more variable now with this button where you can change the distance to your to your face so you have to try a bit more to get the perfect fit but once you have it and once you try it a few more times this becomes second nature and it really is a very nice um, and comfortable headset even though it weighs 645 grams but you won't feel it so much since again the balance is well done with this psvr style headset so yes this is a comfortable device but you do have to try a few times also one more thing which i find is nicer on the oculus go actually sometimes you have the feeling that your nose is being pinched here by this area so therefore you really have to try a bit longer then you have to do it with the oculus go because you know with the oculus go you simply put it on and there's nothing that you can do wrong and it's directly comfortable from the start without you having to try and find the right position but with this yes you do have to try a bit to find the perfect position but then again then it works however i really really like the oculus go in terms of comfort and what is definitely better in for the use case of these mobile headsets that you actually can carry around is actually this strap because well 
With this strap, you can watch movies while lying down on a pillow, right? Because you won't have that knob here in the back of your head. But here with the Lenovo Mira Solo, if you want to lie down, well, yeah, you can, but you will have this here in the back of your head and that is not really comfortable. Well, if you have a very, very soft pillows or a couple of them, then you can still watch movies in the lying down position. But really, honestly speaking, it is still better here with uh, the straps. And without a doubt, this here is the more portable version, right? Since, um, yeah, it doesn't take so much space, but this here, I don't think you're going to bring it into your holidays. I really don't think so. And I just came from my holidays and I did pick the Oculus Go since it's simply easier to bring. And yeah, so if you want a more mobile headset, definitely it's going to be the Oculus Go. And uh, in general, comfort, comfort wise though, this is a very comfortable headset. And uh, yeah, in the direct comparison, it depends on what you like better, but both headsets are really comfortable. Now let's talk about the performance of the Lenovo Mirage Solo as compared to the Oculus Go. So the Lenovo Mirage Solo is powered by a Snapdragon 835, which is quite a current processor that is also being used in the Pixel 2 XL and Pixel 2, for example. And for the Oculus Go, it is powered by a Snapdragon 821, which is the Snapdragon processor that was new like two years ago and that, for example, was being used in the Galaxy S7. So this processor is considerably slower than that of the Lenovo Mirage Solo. And that is also one reason why this can run at 75 Hertz consistently, while this one runs at 60 Hertz most of the time. And uh, well, also in order to make up for that difference, the Oculus Go uses something that is called fixed foveated rendering. So that means that for this device, only the area in the middle of the picture is being rendered at the full resolution and everything in the peripheral vision is not as crisp anymore. That gives this like 30% more processing power thanks to this trick and normally you will not be able to see it but well for this they do not need to use fixed foveated rendering so even the picture will be super clear also in the peripheral vision um, of the device now let's talk about the battery life of the lenovo mirage solo and let's compare it to that of the oculus go and in that category the lenovo mirage solo is the clear winner this year will give you a better life of around three and a half to four hours, which is plenty and should be absolutely enough for every single session. Now, the battery life of the Oculus Go is actually the weakness of the Oculus Go. This will give you a battery life of around two hours and then you have to recharge it again or you need to use a battery pack. But Oculus actually does not want you to use the device while charging. Anyways, this is really good three and a half to four hours and actually it also recharges really fast it will take around one hour and 15 minutes for a full recharge from zero to 100 percent now let's talk about the display lenses and the fov of the lenovo mirage solo as i told you already the display looks great it's an lcd display with a resolution of 1280 times 1440 pixels per eye, which gives it a high resolution as compared to the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive, and it looks considerably better than those two devices. And also, as compared to the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, which have a slightly higher resolution with 1440 times 1440 pixels, actually, this looks better. Now, comparing this to the Vive Pro and to the Samsung Odyssey, even though they have a higher a resolution of 1600 times 1440 pixels this looks very very comparable and you might even feel that there is less screen door effect because of the high fill factor just like as we see it with the oculus go now as compared to the oculus go it is very very similar it's the same resolution it's the same display technology 
most of it is the same. But this has a higher refresh rate as compared to the Oculus Go with 75 Hz, while the Oculus Go most of the time operates at 60 Hz or if it goes to the high speed mode, then it will have a refresh rate of 72 Hz. But this here operates at 75 Hz all of the time. Still, I did in, an in-depth through the lens shots of both the Mirage Solo and the Oculus Go also in order to compare the lenses. And let's have a look at these shots now. This is a through the lens picture of the Lenovo Mirage Solo and to be more specific of the Netflix app, the coffee table scene. Now, as you can tell, the picture looks very crisp. The colors are vibrant and the blacks are black. And also with the naked eye, you can barely see the screen door effect. So definitely looks very nice. Now let's zoom in. So at this zoom level, you of course can see the individual pixels more clearly, but still the picture looks overall very nice. And this is true for the whole picture, not just for the center. I want to point your attention at the cup and please have a look at what it says. You can read Nelson very clearly and we're going to compare this with the Oculus Go in a moment. So here's the same scene in the Oculus Go. As you can tell, it looks equally fantastic because, well, it has the exact same resolution of 1280 times 1440 pixels and also uses the same LCD display technology. So therefore you could not expect many, many differences here. If you want to see how the Go and therefore also the Mirage Solo compared to the Oculus Rift and the Vive Pro, then definitely check out my full MRTV review of the Oculus Go and I'm going to link it in the description below and also here in a card. But now also here, let's zoom in and let's have a look if we can spot any differences. And this here is exactly the same zoom level that we have just used with the Mirage Solo and also here you can now see the individual pixels but still it looks good because the fill factor is so high because of the RGB stripe matrix. But however if you now have a look at the peripheral area of your vision, for example have a look at the cup, now we can tell that it's a bit harder to read that Nelson logo, don't you think so? And that has to do with the fixed foveated rendering where in the peripheral vision area the picture is not rendered at the same resolution like in the focus area. But now let's have a look at the cups side by side. And now here in the side by side comparison, it becomes pretty obvious that the Mirage Solos picture looks better in the peripheral areas of the picture. So here on the left, you can read Nelson while on the right, you can hardly read Nelson. Now that is because the Solo does not need fixed foveated rendering as the Go in order to save some processing power because the Solo processor is much more powerful than that of the Go. But to be perfectly fair, well, these areas are in your peripheral vision and you will not see the differences when you are actually in the headset. And this you can only see because me, the German engineer, is giving you these details now to look at. But what actually counts for the perceived quality when you wear the headset is the focus area. And let's compare that because that also depends on the lenses that are being used. This time we're looking at the screen of the Netflix app. And this is the through the lens picture of the Lenovo Mirage Solo. Now let's zoom into the central area and have a look at the written text. So this is how it looks up close and personal written text on the Mirage Solo in the central area of the screen. And this is what we're going to compare now on the Go. And here's the picture taken through the Oculus Go lens. And well, the picture looks very, very good. Let's also zoom into the same zoom level as we did with the Mirage Solo. And as you can tell here, zooming in into the central area of the Go, this looks very, very clear. Now compared with the Mirage Solo, this for sure looks equally good, if not even a bit better. So let's have them side by side now. On the left the Solo, on the right the Go. And well, the differences are minimal. It's very, very tough to say the left picture or the right picture would be better. I still think that the Go looks a bit better, but only a tiny bit. That's probably because of the lenses. So we need to compare the lenses next. And we're going to do that now. Both headsets use Fresnel lenses. And as you know, Fresnel lenses are prone to God rays. This shining in these high contrast scenes like this one here. 
And as you can tell with the Mirage Solo, we do have quite some god rays. It's not as bad as with the Oculus Rift or with the HTC Vive, but it is quite visible. Now let's compare that with the Oculus Go. As you can tell, the lenses of the Oculus Go are considerably better. There are very few god rays and, well, that is quite the feat for a headset that is half the price of the Mirage Solo. Without a doubt, the Oculus Go lenses are the best lenses on the market right now, period. Now, as you saw, both devices look absolutely fantastic in virtual reality and have a great picture. Now, if I would have to choose one device over the other, as what the graphical clarity is concerned, I would still go for the Oculus Go, even though the Lenovo Mirage Solo is a bit more clear in the peripheral area. Now, why would I still go for the Oculus Go? Because, well, most of the time you're actually focusing on the thing directly in front of you and you're not really looking at the peripheral vision. And because the lenses are better, the things in the focus area look a bit more clear on the Oculus Go and that's why I would still go for the Oculus Go even though this has a higher refresh rate of 75 Hz as compared to the maximum 72 Hz on the Oculus Go. At the end of the section, let's talk about the FOV or the field of view of the Lenovo Mirage Solo. As you know, the FOV is the angle in which you can see within virtual reality and the higher this angle, the better. Now, for the Lenovo Mirage Solo, we have a very high FOV of 110 degrees, which is the same as the Oculus Go and the same as all of the high-end PC headsets. So definitely a very good FOV and the highest FOV that we had in Daydream so far. Now let's talk about the controller that comes with the Lenovo Mirage Solo. And unfortunately, I have to tell you that it's this here. This here is the controller of the Lenovo Mirage Solo. Now I say unfortunately because, well, this is exactly the same old controller that came with the very, very first edition of the Daydream View headset. And that was like two years ago. And just as two years ago, this here does not have a trigger button, which is like a huge oversight. And the community had been asking Google and the Daydream team to give us a trigger, but they simply won't listen to us. It is so sad, I'm telling you that. So what does, what does this have? Well, it has a touchpad here, which is clickable. It has two more buttons here a back button and a daydream home button and it has a volume rocker on the side. Now you can charge it here with USB-C so it is different as compared to the Oculus Go controller where you have a trigger. So the Oculus Go controller is much much better than the daydream controller without a doubt and you also have two buttons here with the Oculus Go controller. And well, you do not have the volume rocker, but that is totally fine since you can adjust the volume also on the headset itself. Also with the Oculus controller, you simply can uh, exchange the batteries as we're here. You need to charge it well, but th this is definitely a matter of taste. What you like better? Do you want batteries or do you prefer to charge it? Now, very, very important. This is also only a three degrees of freedom controller. And what does it mean? Well, you can point like a laser pointer, but you cannot reach like you can with the controllers of the PC VR systems. Or for example, with the PSVR, where you normally have these two controllers and these two controllers are six degrees of freedom. That means you can reach into the virtual worlds, but with this controller, you can only point and that is really really unfortunate and it kind of holds this nice six degrees of freedom headset back because you simply can point even though you have that nice six degrees of freedom headset but you don't have the six degrees of freedom controllers that go with it so controller wise that is a huge huge letdown now let's get to the very important category of content. Which apps and games can you play on the Lenovo Mirage Solo? And how does that selection compare to the Oculus Go? 
Now, first of all, with both headsets, you cannot play Steam VR games. So those beefy and super immersive games like, for example, Skyrim or Beat Saber. If you want to play those, you will still need to get a PC VR headset like the Rift, the Vive, or any of the Windows MR headsets, or probably you can also go for a PSVR that also has most of these super immersive games. The Lenovo Mirage Solo is the first Daydream standalone headset, so this runs on the Daydream platform. And as you know, the Daydream platform is Google's approach to virtual reality. And over the course of the last two years, the variety and selection of apps and games has grown considerably, and there are a lot of great apps and games and very, very high quality ones. Now, if you compare that to the Oculus Go, in terms of quantity, the Oculus Go definitely wins and it has like thousand apps and games as they advertise it themselves. But if you compare the quality, then I would say that the Daydream platform actually has an edge over the Oculus platform. Because even though there are thousands apps and games, lots of them unfortunately are kind of crappy. And well, if you look at the Daydream selection, and I've been following Daydream from day one, and I've been covering Daydream from day one on Daydream District, you can tell that there are so many incredible, incredible um, quality apps and games that you will not find on the Oculus Go. For example, the Google apps like YouTube, this has the YouTube VR app and the Oculus Go does not have the YouTube VR app and in order to watch YouTube, you will need to use the browser in, in the Oculus Go, but it does not have all the functions that you will find in the YouTube VR app here on the Lenovo Mirage Solo. Also other um, YouTube app, no other Google apps, like for example, Google Photos are here on the Lenovo Mirage Solo. So that means if you use the Google Photos app on your phone, all the pictures that you take on your phone are automatically also in your Lenovo Mirage Solo. And that is truly cool. For example, if you take a Photosphere, that 360 degree picture with your phone, then you can directly watch it in virtual reality on the Google Photos app here on your Lenovo Mirage Solo. Or also, there is the Street View app, which is really, really cool. As you know, most places of the civilized world are already covered by Street View. So with the Street View app, you can simply beam to any place on the planet and see how it looks in virtual reality in 360 degrees. And that is so cool. Also, there is the Google uh, Movies app. So if you are already invested in the Google Play Store with movies, then you can also watch them here on your Lenovo Mirage Solo. And that is pretty, pretty cool. Now, for the, for the game selection, actually all the great games, you will find them on both devices. So most of the games that are, that are coming out right now, you will find them on both the Lenovo Mirage Solo and also on the Oculus Go. In terms of content, the Lenovo Mirage Solo has one more cool trick up its sleeve that the Oculus Go simply can't compete with. And that is the Mirage Solo's ability to play all Android apps and games on a huge screen in virtual reality. Think about all the possibilities. This is incredible. You can, for example, check out your emails in the Gmail app, or you could install play unknown battleground mobile on the Lenovo Mirage Solo and play it. All Android apps and games are available and you can play them all in VR. It is pretty, pretty awesome. And well, what is also cool, you can use the USB-C port together with an OTG adapter in order to connect your USB accessories. So for example, what I tried, I connected a wireless keyboard to write emails in Gmail and it worked flawlessly. Also, I connected my PS4 controller to the Lenovo Mirage Solo and it worked great. And what I tried out, I downloaded the Steam Link app that allows you to stream your Steam games, your 2D Steam games to Android devices. And I installed it and it worked flawlessly and I made a video about it, which you can watch here. So definitely check out that video 
This ability to play back Android apps and games make this incredibly versatile and will give it lots of lots of extra content. So as you can tell, there's a lot to like about the content selection on the Lenovo Mirage Solo, but now I need to tell you about the bad side, the thing that is not to like about that content selection. And that is all these apps and games on the Daydream platform were actually made for three degrees of freedom headsets in mind. For all these Daydream View headsets where you would put your phone into it. So these games and apps were made for three degrees of freedom. They were made for headsets like the Oculus Go where you cannot move around in virtual reality. So yes, you can now move around in virtual reality with the Lenovo Mirage Solo and you can force it upon those games, but by design, they don't really make use of this feature. So there's no game where you would actually have to use these functions, like for example, uh, dodging from a ball, for example, or any, any kind of game where actually moving would be a very important part of the game. And that is such a big oversight that is actually inconceivable because Google, they knew that, they, that this would come out, obviously. They knew that well in advance, like for sure, one year before this launch, they knew already, okay, this is gonna come out. And well, probably we should at least make one launch title that would have six degrees of freedom movement as an important part of the game, but they didn't do it. And I really, really cannot understand why they wouldn't make at least one game they would make use of that feature or why why wouldn't they buy a game that makes use of, makes use of this feature like for example the tower which is some kind of interesting jump and run where all of the time you have to duck and dodge from from enemies and from things coming at you so i truly truly cannot understand the lack of original content for the lenovo mirage solo and honestly speaking if I would compare what kind of confidence I have in the two companies, as in Oculus versus Daydream or Google, then I could tell you I have all the confidence in the world as what the Oculus platform is concerned and how they're going to push it as compared to Daydream, which, well, doesn't really seem to be so important for Google. They didn't even talk about this headset at the Google I.O. conference. So in terms of content, which is made for six degrees of freedom and they would actually make use of the capabilities of this headset, there is not much to be found. Now, with all that said, let's come to the final conclusion of this Lenovo Mirage Solo review. And let me tell you, it has never been as hard as this time to come up with the final conclusion because there are so many things to love about this device, but there are also quite a few flaws. So while I could not recommend this to everybody, I also could not recommend this to nobody. So it really depends on what you want from VR. Now, if you would like to have a device which is super portable and which you can bring on your trips and which you can um, use to watch videos in the plane, on the train and so on, then I could not recommend this device. Then better go for the Oculus Go with its awesome screen and its much higher portability. Because, well, this here is simply too bulky to bring it anywhere. So for these people, simply get the Oculus Go. Now, for people who want a fantastic six degrees of freedom experience and who want to have lots of content that is made for six degrees of freedom, then also I could not recommend this device because simply there is not enough six degrees of freedom content there, which was specifically made for six degrees of freedom in mind. And then at this high price, of $399, well, for this price, you can also directly go for the Oculus Rift or for any of the Windows Mixed Reality headsets because then you can have the full six degrees of freedom experience and you can have much, much more content. However, if you do not have a gaming PC and if you do not have a PlayStation 4 and if you would like to have um, 
a more immersive experience than that that you can get with the Oculus Go with its three degrees of freedom, then yes, then I could recommend the Lenovo Mirage Solo because there's still so much potential with the device and there could be so many awesome six degrees of freedom apps in the future if the Daydream team and Google will finally start to push it much, much more. So it is a great device, but at $399, it is simply too expensive to rec recommend it to everybody. And this device, without a doubt, has to come down in price and there must be much more original content for Six Degrees of Freedom. And at the end of this review, I must give Daydream, the Daydream team and the Google team a very, very clear message. You need to push this much harder. You need to push the Daydream platform much harder because if you don't and if you drop the ball like you're doing right now, then the platform is going to go down even though it has so much potential. Again, for me, it's inconceivable that a great hardware device like this one doesn't come with even one tile that was made with six degrees of freedom in mind from the beginning, not even one title. So Google, you had so much time to get this going. You knew about this device for more than a year. And why didn't you come up with at least one title? Like for example, the tower, which is a great obstacle course, which would perfectly show off the abilities of this device. So this I really, really cannot understand. And this Google has to get much, much better. All right, that's it now for this full in-depth review of the Lenovo Mirage Solo. If you have any more questions about the device, please do leave them in the comment section or much better, why don't you directly chat with me and the MRTV community? And you can do so on the MRTV Discord server. The MRTV Discord server is a great free resource that lets you get in touch with me and the MRTV community and all of course for free and you can get there by clicking on the link in the description below. Now that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and it was helpful for you and if yes then I'd be happy if you would give it a thumbs up. All right so that's it. Um, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV then please do that now and I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.